y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome today we are starting our dad inspired series so for the entire month of june every saturday i'm going to release a dad inspired tumbler in honor of father's day we are starting with this 24 ounce tapered tumbler from the tumbler supply store and it is prepped and ready to go you can see I showed you that I spray painted it, but it wasn't like the best spray paint job, but it's okay because most of it's, actually all of it, is getting covered up with something else anyways. This is going to be a split cup, half vinyl, half wood grain. So, you know, I'm not a measure. I just took my painter's tape, ran it down, made sure it was straight, and then used that half to line up where the other half on the other side was and put that tape down. Once the tape was all laid down, I took this vinyl, this hunting themed vinyl that I got from AB Design Co. And I just kind of took it and roughly measured where the side of the vinyl was going, made a mark, and then trimmed down the vinyl. Then normally with vinyl, I would line it up on the edge of the painter's tape, but because this cup is tapered, it would not line up correctly and your design would be crooked. So the easiest way to do this is line up your vinyl with the cup so that the vinyl design is straight. I moved it up so I could trim off the bottom so I don't have too much excess hanging over. I lined it up so that the vinyl is straight, then taped down one side once I was happy with the placement, and then we're going to do the hinge method. So tape down one side, and then on the other side, pull a little of the backing back, cut away the backing, and then stick that part down, and then double check to make sure it's still lined up correctly straight the way you like it before you apply the whole thing. So mine was still lined up the exact way that I wanted it. So I smoothed that, smoothed that down, removed the little hinges, and then the easiest way to do this method is once you have that little part stuck down and you start pushing on it, the backing will remove itself. So I know I'm not explaining this very well, but once you see here, you're pushing down the vinyl and the backing just kind of moves itself for you. And I just take my hand, I go back and forth really smoothly, slowly to try not to get any bubbles or wrinkles. And if you do get a bubble, it's okay. You can just take your sharp X-Acto knife and pop it and nobody will know. And then the backing comes off and it's all complete. Once that is down, I just feel with my hands to see if there's any bubbles. And if there is, I just take my sharp X-Acto knife, like I said, and pop those. Just poke it with your tip of your X-Acto knife and smush it and the air comes right out. So then we need to trim down this vinyl. So right at the edge of the painter's tape, I just take my nail, run it along, so it kind of leaves like an indentation. And then I'm going to trim off the top overhang of the vinyl first. And I just take my X-Acto knife, run it along the edge. And then the best trick that I learned from Mallory Pagnata is to then take your knife and kind of angle it at a 45 degree angle right across the top as well and it gives you the perfect little tiny edge for the vinyl. Once I had the top trimmed I flipped the cup over and this vinyl is kind of stretchy so I pulled it really tight to pull it over the bottom edge. We're going to trim all this off but this just gives it a surface for it to lay flat when we trim it off. It's just easier this way, that way it's pretty flat and gives you a flat surface for when you're running it through the edge trimmer. 
So I got that all trimmed up or I got that all laid flat and then we're gonna go in and we're going to trim the edges of the vinyl next. So back to where I ran my finger against the painter's tape, I'm just going to take my knife and run it down that edge, trying to be as straight as possible. I kind of butt the knife up against the edge of the painter's tape and slowly drag the knife down and it is much much easier with a very sharp exacto knife. Trust me, I know this. I've tried to do it with a not sharp knife and it just rips your vinyl and it's not a pretty scene. So get that trimmed off and then just pull back the painter's tape and it leaves a nice crisp edge of your vinyl. Once you have this side all complete, flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. And I did want to take a minute to mention that you could do this in a completely different order. You could wood grain the whole entire tumbler, then epoxy it, and then add your vinyl. But this is just the way that I did it. So you can do it in whatever order you would like. And then once those edges are peeled off, I am going to use my edging tool from the Cami, ba Cami Page Boutique. You need to get one of these because these tools are a game changer. So you can see here, I peeled off that vinyl and I actually peeled up a little bit of the paint and that's fine. I just went in with a little white chalk paint and touched up those areas because it's getting covered up anyway, so it didn't really matter. And then we're going to tape off the vinyl portion now because we don't want any of these alcohol inks getting on the vinyl. Um, just really push down on that edge to make sure it doesn't seep through and try to go a little light handed on the edges by the vinyl. So tape all that off with the painter's tape and then we are going to get started on this wood grain. For my wood grains, I always use the same chip brush that I've had since I started several, several, several years ago. And depending on how dark or how light you want your wood grain will be determined by the colors of the alcohol ink that you choose. I didn't want mine super dark, but I didn't want it really light either. So I just chose these three Ranger alcohol inks. I think it's caramel. I don't remember, I'll have to look, but I just chose like mid-range browns and I start, this is how I do it. I know that there is several ways to do wood grain and everybody does it different. And once you find your groove, I think that's just the perfect way to do it. But this is just how I do it. So I start with little sections. I put a little spot down and I'll just do like half of the cup for my line and then the next line I'll just do a little tiny line to me this is just what gains or produces the like tree bark looking lines and then sometimes I'll go back in over the same spot if I just want a little bit more depth and dimension and it just gives these lines to look like bark and I just go back and forth over the whole thing until I've completed like finishing covering it in this alcohol ink and making little oval I guess is what you could call them. I will sometimes even lay down two colors in the same spot and just let them blend together. Now, what you wanna be really careful about is if you put too much on and it runs sideways, it will like make a line through wood grain that you've already laid down. So you wanna be really careful because you just want it to go up and down motions, not side to side motions. You can still get this bark effect look using a single color of alcohol ink. You just go over and over in the same spot and it will build those lines. But for me, I just like the depth that it gives with using multiple colors. And just remember to take your time. This takes me a good little while. I find it highly relaxing to do wood grains. I love doing wood grains. 
So I just take my time to make sure it looks exactly like I want it. Sometimes I'll go back over the same spot several times just to build on that to give it that really nice bark look. Once I was all done with that wood grain, I went in and removed all of the painter's tape. I did have a little bit leak under, but with this vinyl, you can't really tell because it kind of had that coloring anyways, but just be note of that. Be very careful when you're doing it this way because it can leak under and ruin another pattern vinyl. So then I went to Etsy and found this perfect deer SVG. I'll leave the link in the bio and I just cut it out of black. I measured it to the size of the wood grade sign, wood grain side, I'll try to say that three times fast, wood grain side, and I used my wrap function so that it would give it a little bit of a taper so it would fit perfectly in this open space which I haven't mastered that yet because sometimes it doesn't work for me and sometimes it does. So good luck with that. But if you do have any questions, I can most definitely try to help you with that. So I just made sure it was centered where I liked it because you know I don't measure. So I just eyeballed it. I'm going to use the hinge method for this as well. And I just put down some painter's tape and again, you could epoxy this whole thing and then apply the decal, but I just wanted to do this all in one swoop and get it over with because I was rushing a little bit. But I trimmed back a little spot on the backing, or trimmed off a little spot of the backing for this decal and then just laid it flat. Now be very careful since this is not a solid piece, there's a lot of little pieces. I did wrinkle it a little bit, but I'm going to show you here in a second how I fixed that. So I laid that down, made sure I still had it lined up perfectly, and it was. So then I just, same as the vinyl, used the hinge method, went back and forth, smoothed it as I went. Towards the end, I ended up just peeling off the rest of the backing and laying it down flat. You just have to be careful with this because of all those little tiny pieces that once you get a wrinkle or a movement in it, it's hard to fix. So I'm just kind of pulling with one hand and pushing down the decal with the other. And here in a second, you'll, I don't know if you can see it, but it's where my decal kind of gets stuck and wrinkled right there. And then I was worried that I would have to peel it all off, but I didn't thankfully. And we just laid it down flat, pulling on it a little bit my recommendation here is to just go slow, take your time, and if you do have to end up pulling it off, this would probably be a good idea to do over a epoxied surface, I'm just saying. But anyways, I got that laid down flat, and then I removed the transfer tape, and then any of the little pieces that were kind of bubbled were easy to just lift and lay back down flat. And then where there was a big bubble or a crease in the bigger portion of the design, I just took my X-Acto knife and cut right on that bubble and then lifted up one edge and laid it down flat. I hope that makes sense. So you're essentially just trimming the decal 
and laying it back down flat. So you can see here, I'm just finished removing that transfer tape and then I just take the edge of my X-Acto knife and lift up where there's a bubble and then push it back down flat. It's really simple for these little pieces and it's nothing that you'll even notice in the final design. And even where I trim it for the bigger crease, you essentially won't be able to tell in the final design as well. Be very careful with your X-Acto knife on the wood grain because you can scratch it. And another thing I wanted to note is on those bigger sections, when I'm cutting the vinyl, I don't drag my X-Acto knife over it. I more just like push into the vinyl so it cuts it. That way I'm not chancing slipping and scratching this wood grain that we worked really hard on. Now we are going to move into the edge striping. I just happen to have this light blue vinyl, I think it's Cricut brand, that matched the blue in this vinyl perfectly. So I wanted to use that and I don't know what I cut it at. I never pay attention to my stripe thickness. I usually make several sizes and cut them all at once and then decide because sometimes I think I want it to be thicker or thinner and I don't really like it when I put it on the tumbler. So I usually just cut a couple different sizes. And then I went in with a super thin black stripe right over the middle of that blue one, just for some added element of design. Once I added all the striping to both sides of the tumbler, then it was all done and ready for epoxy. Now again, remember you could have done this in several steps, but I was just trying to do this as a easy, in case you need a quick last minute Father's Day gift, this would be easy to do all in one swoop before the epoxy. And let me tell you, I used the new CC DIY Fast Set Turbo and that stuff is amazing. It was ready to be touched after the first layer of epoxy in one hour. Like smooth, glass-like finish, beautiful. So run and get you some of that stuff because it's a total game changer. But here it, here it is, all finished. I love wood grain. To me, it's so relaxing to work on it. And I feel like it's a good design element for any masculine tumbler and it goes really well with the whole hunting theme so here it is all complete and i hope that you liked this video and if i inspired you in any way i would love for you to give me a tag give me a like and a follow don't forget to subscribe because it really helps me out on this channel and i will be back next week with a, another dad inspired tumbler oh and real quick if you did want to purchase this tumbler it is available on my website now. You would get it in time for Father's Day.